airplane is one of the luxury class of airplanes, we might call it. There are other choices in the community. There are some prices that go way down low. This just doesn't happen to be one of them. Call it your Mercedes of light sport aircraft, if you will. A very well done airplane with all the stuff you want on it, but of course, it will cost you a little more. Now, they've done very well with it. They've sold more of these. The flight design company has sold more light sport aircraft in the United States than any other company. And they've done that because it meets a lot of people's needs. Whether it meets yours or not, that'll depend on what you think after you've watched this entire video. Up here in the engine compartment, which uh, to many people this looks impossibly small here, because how do you get a whole engine in such a small cowling? In fact, the engine goes back in under this, what they call the mushroom of the instrument panel a little bit. So there's more room in here than it looks like. And this one you might notice if you've seen the Flight Design CT before, you didn't see this little ripple here. That's there because this is the fuel injected engine and there are some supply lines that run right underneath this new rake they call it. Just like the carbureted ULS, this is 100 horsepower, but fuel injection gives it some advantages, most notably in fuel consumption. This one really sips the fuel miserly, as you saw in some of our video where we were pointing out the consumption. Powering it up front is the, uh, what we would say is new form, it's Neu form is the proper pronunciation of it. Uh, all composite propeller, three blade, spinner up front, steerable nose wheel, but this aircraft does not have differential braking, so it uses a central brake that grabs both wheels at the same time. The steering is tight enough to maneuver easily. Coming around here to the side, uh, our fuel inspection port here just to uh, check your fuel and whatnot. The cowl, of course, comes off pretty easily just like they did on uh, some of the other light sports that we've looked at. Um, but uh, that allows you to do your pre-flight inspection quite well. Then this airplane has got some uh, kind of a remarkable feature to it in the sense that it has these immense wide glass windows. If there's a strength of the CT, and there are quite a few things that are strong about it, it's the huge visibility that you get from the inside of this airplane. You can see everywhere pretty well. Uh, there are, are there, you know, with any airplane, there are pluses and minuses. So we talked about the fact that there is a skylight above it, which from right here in our camera view, you can't see. And that's because there's a big beam running through the inside of the cabin. Now, the good news about that is no struts, which keeps the visibility better. Uh, you don't have anything to block your vision that way. Uh, and it's just an excellent uh, viewing platform, this airplane, no question. But when you have what's called a cantilevered wing, you've got to support it somehow to carry the air loads. And they do that by a beam that passes through the inside. We'll look at that when we go inside the airplane. For now, I want to show you something else beside the, uh, of course, the nice wheel pants on it. But in this airplane, unlike some, you have a baggage compartment. Opens with a key. And then the whole thing just swings down. And inside here, you've got a, quite a lot of room inside this area uh, that you can put a fair amount of stuff. Now, if you look down, if the camera can see down here, you can see the ballistic parachute system, which is mounted right in the center of the airplane, comes out through a panel up here on the top of the aircraft. But there is a guard inside there so that any baggage you put inside doesn't tend to show, uh, has no opportunity to conflict with the parachute system. The opening here is driven by the amount of structure that the airplane requires to be in, uh, structurally integral. It limits the size of the opening here. So some bags that you might choose to carry with you in your CTLS might not fit in there and you might need to go out and buy a bag that does. That's not exactly a big burden, but this space back here is capable of holding 55 pounds and there's one on the other side as well. So that's 110 pounds of baggage capacity. Now you may not be able to put that much in it because it depends on how much else you put inside the airplane, how much fuel and so on. But at least the baggage area is there and it's easy to get at. You don't have to crawl on top of your knees or anything. Put the door back on, you see it just it swings freely here. And uh, there's a little trick inside because these strings that help locate it, you just reach inside here and you just pull on the string and that will hold it there. Then you pop the pins back in and you close it up. And by locking it, you secure it, and now that door can't open in flight. So a lot of people talk about how you get in airplanes, and indeed, they all have a technique. This one's actually pretty simple as it goes. Here's my technique. Just get my seat on, my rear on the seat, swing my legs in. Now, you know, I've gotten a little bit of practice in this airplane as we flew it today, but the reality of it is, this stick in the way, which is a wonderful place for the stick, and it's very comfortable and easy to fly, but there are some designs that have a fold-down stick, 
And you know what? That'd be a nice feature to have in this airplane. Any airplane, no matter how good it is, you can always have a wish list for things that may not be on that airplane. That's one thing I might like. And that could be done quite well, and there's some other designs that have it. On the plus side are the seats in this airplane. Now, these are some nice leather seats in this airplane. Got a nice headrest up here. We've got the headsets just hooked over the back of the headrest there, but uh, they're very comfortable seats. But the reason why they're comfortable is not the fact that they're leather. They do adjust back and forth here. There's a lever down here that you pull and you can swing the seats forward and aft. And you can adjust by a strap that you can't see in the camera, but there's another strap behind the seat here that will allow the seat to go up and down somewhat too. So you can adjust the seats quite well. The rudder pedals do not adjust. And you can see down here as you look at them, there's no uh, brake behind them because these, this airplane does not have differential braking. Here's the brake right here, it's a single hand brake lever. Grabs both wheels at once. But some of the best reasons why I like these seats when I flew in them is this little squeeze bulb here, which has two releases on it. There is a air bladder in the seat cushion, there's an air bladder in the seat back, and you can adjust them separately so that you can have the right kind of lumbar support and the right kind of seat support that you want, and you can raise and lower the seat slightly by that function which makes it a very comfortable airplane to be in for a long time. Some of the best things I have to say about the CTLS is the seats. They're really nice seats. So one more point about entry that I forgot when I first got in the airplane, and I'm, I'm demonstrating here with my leg. I've got my leg almost extended and I'm swinging it in and out of the airplane. And if you'll pull back with the camera, you'll see over here how far forward that door goes. That means you don't have to pull your legs like this to get in the airplane. That's another nice thing I like about it. And I've taken up uh, some people that are a little older than I, and they get in and out of the airplane quite handily. However, some do need a step down there on the ground because it's a little bit higher, and depending on your body height, you might want to get up. And one, the only downside of that is some people are tempted to put their foot on the wheel pant in order to help themselves in. That's not a good thing. You don't step on the wheel pants of this or any sport, light sport aircraft that I'm aware of. There's another thing I want to mention right here because it's kind of a presence in the cabin. Now in my height and where I've got the seat, and I normally have the seat about where it is now uh, in this airplane when I'm getting the chance to fly it, uh, it does adjust fore and aft and that changes the position a little bit, but you can see I can lean forward in here easily. Now I'm about 5'10". If I was 6'3 and had the seat in the same place, when I lean forward, I'm going to run into this big beam up here. What this is, is the structure for the cantilevered wing. You don't have struts on this wing, you don't have that blocking your view, you do have to have this then. There's no way around it. Uh, it just has to be there in this kind of airplane. For me it doesn't bother me at all and for a lot of people it won't but if you're an exceptionally tall person sit in the airplane before you buy it and make sure it's going to fit. Since the seats do adjust quite a bit it might still work for you. It's one of those things you got to check. But let's talk about visibility in this airplane. I'm going to bring the window down here. There's another little handle back here, which you, I guess your camera can see me do this. So there's a, actually a built-in place to grab the handle and pull the door down. And you just close it gently, and then you just easily push forward. That latch is fore and aft on this great big door so that it can't open. You've got a multiple opening here. You've got a great big opening lets a lot of air in while you're slow. You close that, and then you push this out and that lets it a lot of air cruise. In fact, it was enough so in our flight earlier that I actually wanted to close it up somewhat and just have it open a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> there is also cabin heat, which is activated by this knob right here, and it does shoot cabin heat air up the, uh, air up the windscreen as well so that it would defrost any uh, moisture that might have collected up there. It makes the cabin quite warm. You can see down here there's a little, uh, this metal part right here. This lets heat in down by your feet. Uh, if you're flown any length of time in an airplane at altitude, your feet can get cold. Well, the flight design engineers took that into consideration. An exceptionally well executed airplane, even with fancy features like you'd expect on a luxury aircraft of these adjustable, multi-adjustable uh, wind shades that are uh, smoke glass or smoke plastic. Uh, it's, all over it's done very nicely. From your camera angle, you can see here you've got fuel information on these nice digital instruments. But you've also got an actual physical, here's a piece of fuel tubing right here with a marker here that shows you about where you are. So you don't have any doubt about how much you've gas you've got. There's one of these on each side. You can see it very readily. This big handle up front here, which some folks use to, to hang their headsets, by the way, 
because this is another place where you can hang them. It keeps them out of the way while you enter. It's not a bad spot. I tend to put them back here for today, but uh, that's just the way it goes. But this big handle up here is part of what secures the two halves of the wing that come in like a sailplane. They butt together like that. And this is part of what pins those together and keeps those wings locked in place. But it does give you a nice grip point to lift yourself up in the seat and so forth. So some people use them that way, some people use them for headsets, just a feature of the airplane. So we let enough air into the cabin, that was nice. Let me show you now another feature. Go out here, pull the door, close again. Secure it again with one, one latch movement. Look at the size of the window here, first of all. It's just a giant big window, and it's bowed out just enough that I can, I can look down. I can see most of the wheel pan, and therefore I can look down, not quite underneath me, but excellent downward visibility. Out the front, I've got a large visibility and the windscreen comes all the way back. So if I want to look up here like we do in some airplanes, you can see upward quite well. And as your camera can show here, in addition, behind the main spar is a skylight so I can see up. If I turn to, the, to that side in particular, let's say, while I'm seated on this side, I block the view of traffic with the wing. But that's not a problem because I can just look out the windscreen and see it up there. I've also got these quartering windows that you can see back here. And uh, with those, I can, uh, in this airplane, I can turn around and see the, on my side, I can see the tail as I move it. Now, it's not quite as convenient as having a rear window like some airplanes have, but it's a pretty good substitute for it. And the older models didn't have that, so that was something they added. So we showed you the two aft baggage areas that are each accessible with a door on each side that can hold 55 pounds. Obviously, you can't get at that in flight need a few things in flight. You got the hat rack back here that can hold five and a half pounds. Comes with a nice secure netting and three hole down points so stuff stays where you put it. Typical of a luxury aircraft, it comes with these extra features. Underneath the little carpeted foot section here is a stash point inside the airplane and there's one on both sides. This can actually hold quite a bit of stuff down in here. And if you need just a little bit more, well there's also some room behind the seats here. You can put some stuff behind the seats. And when you close the door, you've got a little pouch over here on the side that can hold maps or flashlights or pens or other things that you might need. The only thing they seem to have forgotten, where's the cup holders on my luxury light sport aircraft? I guess we'll have to leave something for the engineers to create. So the inside of the airplane, uh, we've showed you now quite a bit. Let's have a look at the panel first of all. This is one of the nicer executed panels I've seen. It's clean, it's orderly, it's uh, buttons nicely in a row all the uh, circuit breakers over here, but let's just go through the panels here. First of all, two of the large Skyview Dynon Avionics, Avionics uh, digital instrument panels. These things show you everything as we showed you in the in-flight section. In the center, flank, uh, flanked by the two Dynons, is the Garmin 796, a marvelous instrument that I've really come to love in the airplanes that I've used it in. And also using the Garmin radio. Now, this particular airplane doesn't have the one with all the memory features. I would like to have that. Uh, but the Garmin radio functions very well. Below that, all your switches for your avionics and your lighting and so forth, uh, intercom stuff, uh, the flap indicator right down, a flap uh, lever right here with the indicator up above it, uh, battery and, and generator, ignition switch, instrument lighting, adjustments there. And here's kind of a nice feature on this airplane. I'm going to get the keys in my hand. As you see, I can have the keys in now. I can get them in and in and out. This is the fuel valve, and if that's in the down position, you're going to notice it when you put your key in here because the handle's right there by it. So now, back to the fuel open position. Uh, and we mentioned cabin heat located right here. In addition to the Dynon Skyview showing you all the engine instruments you need, the moving map with all of its information, the whole primary flight display with the synthetic vision, and uh, if you fly near mountains and whatnot, it paints all the mountains and tells you just where the obstacles are. That's if you can't even see outside. You can still see a representation of the actual terrain very nicely. That's terribly reassuring, but arguably nothing more useful. This airplane has been equipped with ADS-B, Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. But forget the long words. ADS-B is how everybody knows it. And what it tells you are two things that are very important and the beauty of it is they're both free. Now the hardware costs a few dollars, not that bad, but it does cost some. Once it's installed, you see traffic on the screens and you get weather on the screens. Both are free. 
when we flew today, it was just a little bit hazy outside, and there was a traffic indication on the uh, screens. It shows you where they are, where they're headed, and whether they're above or below you, and how much. And I have often had the experience where I have seen things on the traffic indication before I could physically see them outside. That's a very reassuring quality, and again, it's free. It's part of what your tax dollars are paying for. You might as well install the hardware. What was going to be a very expensive thing on airplanes has now come down so low in price that you can even see those representations on an iPad. So there you can get pretty much all of it. In addition, this airplane is a performer. And it'll run right at the high end of the performance, 120 knots. Uh, it'll go that high. Typical cruise is 110, 115 knots this is. So 125, 130 miles an hour at which it gets phenomenal gas mileage, just very, very good. Almost 30 miles to the gallon at 125 miles an hour. That's a lot better than my car, I'm telling you. One of the ways it gets that is by the flaps. You've got 0, 15, and 30 down. Okay, that's fairly common, but you've also got 6 up. Now, flaps going up is actually called reflexing, and it brings the back end of the flap, or if you will, this way, brings the flap up a little higher than just level with the rest of the wing. When you do that, the airplane has just a little bit less drag and it probably adds two or three knots to the airplane. So it's just a nice feature. That's something that comes off of many airplanes that are made in the European countries where sailplanes like that kind of hardware. All in all, this is your luxury aircraft with pretty much everything that you want on it. You will have to pay for it, but you get an awful lot. We've told you as much as we think we can tell you about the airplane. To get lots more information, go to flightdesignusa.com that's the U.S. importer, or flightdesign.com is the manufacturer in Germany. I've got lots of information on these airplanes and flight reports and news items and other things you can find. All that's available on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. 